Hello, everybody from my side. Uh, good day, um, good morning, and good afternoon. My name is Fabian Burkhardt, and I'll present to you today an overview of the electricity and heat module. Without further ado, let's go into the presentation. Uh, the outline, as I have pointed out, uh, it's electricity and heat, and I will talk about, about the recent trends in electri electricity followed by some key concepts in relation to electricity statistics. And of course, if there are any questions, we'll also have some time in the end for some questions. So uh, let's start with uh, some key electricity trends. Mm, here in this graph, you can see the evolution of the world electricity production between 1974, when the I was founded, and now in 2021. Over this period, the world electricity production increased year up and year, uh, with the exception of 2009, following the onset of the economic crisis, and 2020, lately, um, at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Overall, this resulted in a more than fourfold increase in electricity production, uh, from roughly yeah, 6,300 terawatt hours in 74 to about uh, yeah more than 28,000 terawatt hours in 2021. Um, to make it a bit more interactive, we also have a quiz for you um, where you, you can go to Menti. I will uh, quickly um, switch to Menti where you can um, share your opinion about it. What is the main fuel used for electricity generation in the world in 2021? In order to answer that, please go to menti.com and use the code um, as pointed out above, uh, 69927949. So the answers are either natural gas, oil, solar and wind, coal, hydro, or biofuels. I can see the uh, a race here, no, not really a race. Coal is clearly winning uh, with about 20 votes. Uh, I can see some votes for natural gas and hydro, um, all important energy carriers. Okay, I can see that coal has now received about 21 uh, answers, which is also correct. So coal um, is the main fuel used for electricity generation in the world in 2021. And now let's deep dive into it, um, into the um, uh, historical evolution. Over the period from 74 to 2021, the mix of fuels used to generate the electricity changed. Uh, for instance, if we look at the share of electricity production from oil, shaded in uh, dark blue, um, second from the bottom, you will see that oil has fallen from about 25% of production in 1974 to less than 3% in 2021. Similarly, uh, the share of hydro has fallen from about 23% to 70% as many of the suitable large scale sites have already been dammed. Um, by contrast, um, the share of production from natural gas shaded in light blue has increased significantly, rising from about 12% to almost 24% uh, of the generation. There's also been a noticeable increase in production from nuclear power shaded in yellow, uh, with the share rising from about 4% in 1974 to roughly 13% in 2010. However, its share, it share has declined slightly, in particular following uh, the accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant in 2011. During this time, you will notice that coal still remains the main fuel used for power generation, with its share changing little uh, between 74 and 2021. One of the main reasons for coal enduring popularity is its yeah, still cost advantage over other fuels, at least in part. However, on the emission side front, there is some good news. If you look at the share of electricity output from solar and wind shaded in yellow and light green, 
uh, second from the top of the graph, uh, you will see that although output from these renewable sources is still yeah, small, the share has been steadily increasing in recent years. And also production costs have fallen and countries has, have begun to adopt more environmentally friendly policies. To sum it up, uh, compared to 1974, the electricity mix has a lower share of oil and hydro and a higher share of natural gas, nuclear, solar and wind. Now let's have a closer look um, at this graph at the electricity generation of 2021. As mentioned, coal remains the dominant fuel providing approximately 35% of, of the electricity generation, followed by natural gas, uh, which provides just under a quarter of the total output. Then in total, um, almost two thirds of all the electricity generation comes from combustible fuels, so coal, oil, gas, biofuels, and waste. Uh, with the remaining one third produced by non-emitting um, sources such as nuclear, hydro, solar, wind, and geothermal. As mentioned, the share um, of output from solar and wind though is still relatively small and has been growing steadily over the recent years. Let's look at the world electricity production by region. Uh, here you can see a graph of electricity uh, production for the OECD and non-OECD countries. Um, as you can see, electricity production in... As of 2021, non OCD countries share a production of uh, around 59% compared with uh, 28 in 1974. However, with all the non OCD countries, Okay. Um, now um, let's look at the. Um, at the, we have done that already. Um, let's look at the electricity consumption by sector. Uh, firstly, you will notice that consumption has increased uh, fourfold um, between 1974 and 2021, growing from around uh, 5,000 terawatt hours to almost 23,000 terawatt hours. If you remember a few slides back, uh, we have seen that production has also increased fourfold. So it makes sense that consumption would increase by a similar amount. Mm, however, the numbers are different. If you remember from the production graph, um, production in 2021 was about 27 terawatt hours, while final consumption is only around 23,000 uh, terawatt hours. Well, um, how do we come up with this uh, small deficit, uh, with the small gap, uh, transmission and distribution losses, of course, and there's also energy uh, industry own use. Looking at the consumption by sector, uh, globally, industry is the largest consuming sector. However, its share of consumption has declined over time uh, as restructuring and improvements in energy efficiency in particular non in, in OECD countries has seen electricity demand in industry rise at a lower rate than in other sectors. Yeah, however, this graph uh, is for the world. And as you will see on the next slide, consumption patterns in OCD and non-OCD differ. So uh, if we compare the sectoral consumption in the OCD on the left uh, with non-OCD countries on the right, we can see that there are some differences. In the OCD, three sectors, the industry, residential and commercial and public service, uh, each consume, consume roughly about, uh, well, a third, uh, about 30 to 32 of the elect electricity demand. By contrast, in the non-OCD countries as a whole, industry represents almost half of total electricity demand. 
There are many reasons for these differences, uh, the structure of the respective economies, income levels, and so on and so forth. However, Similarly, um, we can apply a structure for heat. Uh, also, heat can be, pu be produced as primary and secondary energy. Also by capturing uh, it from lower uh, temperatures sources such as heat pumps. So uh, let's look at the producers. Um, electric electricity and heat producers can be divided into two very, very broad categories, main activity producers and order producers. Main activity producers generate electricity and heat for third parties as their primary activity. Purpose of the facility is to generate electricity or heat. For instance, Contrast, uh, auto producers generate electricity or heat only as a secondary activity uh, in support of their primary activity. For instance, large chemical manufacturing facilities may have an on site power plant uh, to generate electricity and heat for use in a production process. Some of this electricity and heat may also. However, the main purpose of the facility is to produce chemicals and not to produce electricity and heat. Therefore, we classify that as an order producer. It is important to note that the distinction between the two producer types um, are not based on whether they are public or private companies, but on their primary activity. So main activity producers and order producers can be public and or private companies. Ownership is irrelevant. Now, uh, Coming to the plant types, uh, electricity and heat producers can be further distinguished by the type of plant uh, that is operating. There are now three categories, electricity only plants, which as the name suggests only produce electricity, heat only plants, which again, as the name suggests, only produce heat. And then we have the combined heat and power plants, CHP plants, which generate both electricity and heat in a combined process. This is may or this may also be known as torque generation. Okay, and now we have understood these concepts. Let's look at the reporting conventions. Um, for main activity producers, the reporting conventions are quite simple. All production of electricity and heat is reported. However, for oil producers, there are some specific conventions for heat. Uh, this is because oil producers um, are also industrial consumers that use fuel to power the processes. Okay, let's look into it. Electricity, all electricity produced is reported in the electricity and heat questionnaire. However, um, only the amounts of heat sold are reported. Amounts of heat generated for own use on the site are not reported. Similarly, when reporting the associated fuel inputs uh, to electricity and heat production, uh, for heat only, the amounts of fuel input associated with the heat sold are reported. Um, in the new questionnaire, there's also a, a new section for the auto-consumed heat. Uh, I'll not dive any deeper into that, uh, but the auto-consumed heat is the amount of uh, 
unsold heat generated and or consumed on uh, on site by other producers who report sold heat. And for that, uh, we have a new section for that. Um, let's look at another important concept, uh, talking about electricity, uh, the distinction between cross and net production. Cross production refers to the total output of electricity or heat generated in a facility before um, any is used. However, not all of this is used for productive purposes beyond the power plant. Some of the electricity and heat generated is used on site at the power plant for lighting, heating, and to support plant operations. This referred to its own use. The remainder that is left over um, after sub subtracting the own use is the net production. However, remember that for all producers, production only refers to heat sold. Okay, let's then look to the next concept, the convention of reporting of own use data. If you recall, for auto producers, we only report the amount of heat sold, not total heat production. Therefore, we can report the total amount of heat used for own use, as this would not align with the reported production figures. So we need to make an assumption. For main activity producers and for all production of electricity, the situation is simple. Net production is equal to gross production minus own use. Um, as we have uh, yeah, just described on the previous slide. However, for all production of heat, we assume that cross production is equal uh, to net production and there, there is no own use. This is because for all production of heat, it is difficult to distinguish between heat that is used for own use and the heat that is used actually to support the plant operations. Um, so to recap, uh, for heat produced by all producers, there are slightly different reporting conventions. We only report heat sold, and we assume that cross equals net. For main producers um, and, and for all electricity production, there are no exceptions, just for heat from all producers. Now that we have covered the tri tricky part um, of the presentation, let's move on to electricity and heat supply chain and to some of the data that we collect in our questionnaires. In terms of supply, we collect fuel inputs, cross production, own use, net production. And in addition to that, we also collect data on electricity used for pumped storage, um, hydro, electric boilers, um, also heat pumps. And finally, on the supply side, we also collect uh, data on trade. So with this data, you have the supply side of the electricity balance. Now, um, in between supply and consumption, the electricity travels along cables for loss secure. These data are also collected in a questionnaire. And finally, there are also end users who so will collect data on consumption across the various consuming sectors, industry, transport, residential. So in theory, the difference between supply and final consumption should be just losses, but in reality, there might also be some statistical differences. And finally, we also collect data and that should, uh, well, refer to as peak load and capacity data, which can be useful for other analysts. Um, in our last slide, and we have seen that losses are the main differences between supply and consumption figures. So just to give you a bit more of a detail on the mag magnitude of losses that can be expected on why and on why they occur. As electricity traveled through the cables and transformers, energy is lost along the way. Much of this is in form of heat as the ele electric current flowing through the cables raises its temperature. This energy is lost as it dissipates into the surroundings, reducing the amount of energy that re uh, reaches the final destination. In general, losses can be expected to be in a range of yeah, about 5 to 15 percent. And with losses on the lower end of a scale observed in more advanced, compact, and well-maintained grids, and higher losses observed in older and more distributed grids. Globally, uh, transmission and distribution losses represent about 7% of the total uh, cross production and in energy industry own use represents uh, further 9%. So 
it's on total about 60% of the total gross production, well, a very sizable amount is lost or used outside of the final consuming sectors. Here on this slide, you can see the figures for 2021. As you can see, gross production amounted to almost yeah, 28,000 terawatt hours, while final consumption to a bit more than 24,000 um, terawatt hours. Now let's look at the concept um, of generation efficiency. It is calculated as the total gross energy produced by a plant divided by the energy content of the fuel used to produce it. So energy out divided by energy in. Uh, according to the law of thermodynamics and dynamics, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, efficiency must be less than 100%. The expected efficiency will vary depending on the fuels and technology. Uh, for instance, combined cycle gas turbines uh, would uh, be expected to have a higher efficiency than yeah, some other coal power plants. The efficiency must be calculated using energy units and you must use the same units for the inputs and outputs. So uh, looking at it here, we have 100 units uh, um, as an input, and we can see an output 20 units of electricity and 40 units of heat, and there are 35 units are lost. So the efficiency is actually 20 plus 45 output divided by 100 input equals to 65%. Um, looking at the trade, uh, unlike with other fuels, trade is a bit different. Electricity and heat uh, reported um, on the basis of borders crossed and not origin and destination. Um, so, for example, if Portugal was to export electricity to France through Spain, then as France and Portugal do not share a common border, they would not report trade with each other but with Spain. So, Portugal would report exports to Spain, Spain would report imports from Portugal, and exports to France, and finally France would just report imports from Spain. So Portugal and France would not report trade with each other. Uh, this differs um, slightly to the conventions used for the other fields. Finally, um, I want to talk to you about one more concept uh, in electricity statistics that is the use um, that, should, that you should be aware of, and that is the difference between energy and power. Simply put, power is the rate at which energy is used. So power is simply energy divided by time. And power is measured in watts. Energy is measured in joules. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. Well, um, obviously, sometimes these, these numbers get quite uh, confusing. And after a while, so for convenience, um, we call 3,000, 6,000 joules a watt hour. And this is the amount of energy that one watt uh, of power would produce in one hour. This is an important distinction. Watt refers to power and watt hours to energy. This concept is actually very useful uh, if we're now diving into the next topic, which is capacities. Um, also, we have said that but, we have, um, yes. What? If you can close in two minutes, then we yes. pass to the Q&A. Thanks. Yes. Let's cover the net maximum capacity. In addition to production and consumption and trade data, the electricity questionnaire also captures data on power plant capacities and uh, net maximum capacities. And the net maximum capacity is simply the maximum power output that a power plant can produce with all brands running at uh, yeah, full power on 31st December of a reporting year. These are very useful data for analysts to have. However, they can also be useful for statisticians when checking data, as we can compare actual reported production values with the maximum potential of production values to check. Again, uh, here it should be less than 100%, except if there were plans closure uh, near the end of the year, in which case the figures may be distorted. And there are different expected values depending on technology. For instance, nuclear power plants are expensive to build and therefore are typically run as much as possible, whereas intermittent um, technology, solar PV, 
um, is both weather and location dependent and will have a lower capacity factor. With this, uh, I will close the presentation and uh, we will take uh, 